Sami Zayn has been with the WWE for over a decade now and not until very recently did we start to see the company give him opportunities to succeed and him explode in popularity. When NXT rebranded in 2012, he was the first big star of that brand, someone who had been around the wrestling scene for a while, logged the miles and now was finally in the WWE to carve his own path. Well, in NXT, Sami Zayn was part of one of the brand's best stories, a story where he just kept coming up on the short end of things, kept losing, never had it in him to finish the job, but then eventually found the killer instinct, built back up, proved the doubters wrong, and became the NXT champion. And here you could see that Sami Zayn could be a fantastic underdog for the WWE. He had a flair for the dramatic, he had the passion, and he could wrestle with the best of them. There was a genius to his promos because they were filled with passion. As fans, we knew that Sami Zayn could make noise when he got to the main roster. That he was as good as can't miss when he moved up can't miss simply became a miss an underutilized star meandering around aimlessly floating around from storyline to storyline just kind of there to fill a roster spot and sure he had some great matches but fans knew that he could bring more to the table i knew it you knew it but maybe wwe brass just didn't know years passed he went through different iterations nothing really clicked he got lost in the shuffle and then things finally changed in 2019, Sami Zayn aligned himself with Shinsuke Nakamura, becoming his mouthpiece, calling the fans parasites, bigging up Nakamura, and it was your standard heel manager template that many have followed and many will continue to follow, nothing that you and I haven't seen before. What this was, was a bridge into him winning his first singles championship the following year. At Elimination Chamber, Sami recorded the pin in a 3-on-1 handicap match to win the Intercontinental Championship. I know, 3-on-1 handicap match, this goofball winning the Intercontinental Championship, it just makes too much sense. And ladies and gentlemen, this was the moment you can trace back to being the revival for Sami Zayn, because he simply mastered the art of not giving a fuck. See, with characters, you always want them to bring something different to the table, but you always want an authenticity as well, something that marries real life with entertainment, and here Sami did. He was just goofing around and being the ultimate troll, his whole persona was based around being goofy and couple that with the thought that he was being held back by the WWE. What helped his cause was WWE stripped him of the Intercontinental Championship after 65 days. This happened because Sammy didn't want to wrestle in the earlier months of COVID. A tournament was held to crown a brand new Intercontinental Champion. But let's not forget, Sami Zayn never lost that championship. He made his return three months later and proclaimed himself the rightful Intercontinental Champion, adamant that the machine was working against him and that there was a conspiracy against him and every single wrestler, fan, and crew member was in on it, telling the audience, or virtual audience, that he's been suppressed and silenced. And you're sitting there and you're thinking to yourself, what's this scruffy, unmaintained Canadian lumberjack talking about? He's spewing complete nonsense, but in a way, it made sense and it clicked. Next up for Sami was his crusade to prove that he was the rightful Intercontinental Champion. This came at Clash of Champions against both Jeff Hardy and AJ Styles in a ladder match for the championship. The match ended up being one of the crown jewels of the pandemic era, but it was the finish to the match which was an even bigger stroke of genius. Let's not forget, Sami was the master strategist, and his strategy comprised of him using handcuffs to keep his opponents down. But you know, common logic would suggest you take one hand and you attach it to the other, or you just handcuff AJ and Jeff together, maybe you attach them to like a lighting rig or something like that. None of that happened. Instead, Sammy takes the handcuffs, puts it through Jeff Hardy's earlobe, locks the handcuffs, and attaches the other cuff to the ladder. You thought Randy Orton piercing Jeff's ear with a screwdriver was bad? Well, think again. So, one person down. Now, Sammy's only got AJ. AJ escapes everything that Sammy's throwing at him. Jeff gets back into the match, holding a ladder to his ear, and then Sammy just handcuffs AJ to the ladder and unhooks both championships. And the scene when he unhooked them was so funny, because you had one guy holding a ladder to his ear, locked to that ladder, trying to unhook a championship, while the other guy couldn't go anywhere. Meanwhile, this troll, this dude who's just lost his mind, is there celebrating with the ultimate gotcha moment. So, the Intercontinental Champion was now officially Sami Zayn, and genuinely he was bringing a lot to the product. Even though this time in his rebirth is forgotten because some of the stuff that came later, which I'll get to, by the end of the year, Sami was hosting the first annual Sami Awards, giving himself the comeback of the year, match of the year, so on and so forth, until being clowned by Big E, who he eventually lost his Intercontinental Championship to. And now this man went more berserk. He said that there was a conspiracy against him, and he fully leaned into this. So he hires a full-on documentary crew to note the findings and videotape everything that's going on in the WWE. 
Then, apparently because this guy loves handcuffs, handcuffs himself to the barricade in protest. So you have all these wrestlers entering while Sammy is just there in the background trying to fix the WWE. The commitment to the bit here, you gotta applaud. On his vendetta to take down the company, of course, we got some passion-filled promos, the earliest of many memorable, goofy dances, the whole nine. 2021 wasn't too crazy for Sammy. In fact, towards the end of the year, they were turning his act into more of a comedy act than anything because you could tell they just weren't serious with him, but he was in the ring with some huge stars. Sammy became the number one contender to the Universal Championship held by Roman Reigns by winning a battle royal, but eventually Brock Lesnar gaslit Sammy into taking the match a lot earlier because Lesnar wanted Reigns to himself. So since Sammy was actually smart, he's indirectly denying Brock saying he's going to wait for the title match, then eventually has to cave in, he takes the match on that night, gets beaten down by Lesnar and the match with Roman is over in seconds. Next week out comes Sammy, neck braces, nurses and all, nursing injuries of god knows what, out comes Lesnar, and before we get into this segment, Lesnar speaking French makes me genuinely uncomfortable and equally as confused. Well, je ne sais quoi, baby. Oui, oui. Lesnar invites Sammy to Saskatchewan to go fishing and Sammy responds with quote, I'm vegan. Brock starts to wheel Sammy away before being stopped by Paul Heyman and it's a segment like this that I can best use to help people understand how good Sammy is. It was these little words and one liners he was throwing out, it was the subtle jabs and nonsense he was spewing, it was the facial expressions and commitment to making what he did the week previous count and when you have something like that it's magic. Magic is exactly how you could describe Sammy's 2022. That year rolled around and into the WWE came Jackass star Johnny Knoxville. It was announced that he would participate in the Royal Rumble. Only thing was, Sammy didn't like that so much. He became the Intercontinental Champion again to start the year before Knoxville cost him the title and it was apparent where this was headed, a match at WrestleMania. But on the road to Dallas, holy hell was Sammy Zayn ever on the carry job of a lifetime. Sammy debuted his brand new segment called In Zayn where he followed in Johnny Knoxville's footsteps and tested self-defense weapons trying to to prove everyone that it was light work. Only thing for Sammy was he forgot to turn them on. So he's getting cattle prodded for the audience's enjoyment. He said he was going to clear the ring while riding in a shopping cart. It was pure madness. But then this thing went one step further. See, Sammy apparently got Knoxville's number and like an obsessed girlfriend kept texting him. So Knoxville decides to fly Sammy Zayn's phone number over Los Angeles with a plane. Let's dock Sammy. Great idea. So Sammy's receiving message after message, his life's been made hell, he can't go to a restaurant and eat in peace, the guy can't shower, he can't watch TV, he's got no peace, he's getting bombarded with FaceTime calls, which he did respond to, his number is all over the internet, it's on subway stations, this guy's getting spammed by fans, and it was hilarious. So funny, because for the second time in this video, he leaned into what was happening. The commitment to the bit. And that goes so far. Sammy was crashing Knoxville's premiere, just living his best life, dancing around. But now we were finally here. WrestleMania 38, night two. A night after Cody came back, a night after Steve Austin wrestled his first match in 20 years, and we got maybe the greatest comedy match of all time. Surely it's between this and WLC. Bell rings in this anything goes match, and it was madness. Sammy takes it to Knoxville, makes sense, one's a wrestler, one's not. Then Knoxville uses a fire extinguisher on Zayn before bringing out the weapons, which didn't really help Knoxville. So instead, we have weapons and props brought up to level 11. From under the ring, Sammy pulls out a table filled with mousetraps. I'll get back to that in a second. Now, I've never watched Jackass, but in the ring comes this man named Party Boy Pontius. This guy. I can't even read the script because I keep thinking about what happened. So this guy takes off his clothes and he has his cheeks out all while doing this stupid little strut slash dance. This gives Knoxville some time to take control for a bit. Sammy retreats to the outside and from under the ring emerges Wee Man. And forget Hogan on Andre, who cares about that? Wee Man body slams Sammy Zayn. Then more surprises come from under the ring because they brought out this mechanism with a foot on it so you already knew what was going to happen, surprisingly it didn't, instead Sammy goes to the top rope for a dive but Knoxville's got a button which triggers pyrotechnics and causes Sammy to fall, eventually bowling ball to Sammy's balls, then punt from the uh, mechanism, then Knoxville brings out a taser 
Sammy runs for his life right into a ginormous hand that slaps him like an Indian mom in 2005 and then Zayn goes through the mousetrap table. Eventually, out comes the entire jackass team to pull out a gigantic mousetrap. They trap Sammy in it and Knoxville wins. I don't know what this was, but it was brilliant. So random, filled with shenanigans, but it was just so good. My words don't do justice to how much fun this really was. If you didn't have fun watching this, I don't know when you're gonna have fun watching wrestling. Just the creativity, the stupidity, and the hilarity, it was all there. This thing had its own genius to it, and honestly, I think a lot of us do appreciate how good it was. So the appreciation towards Sammy obviously grew a little bit more, but we're not done yet. After WrestleMania, Sami Zayn became even more of a legend, did things that were even funnier, and somehow, someway, became WWE's hottest act for a period of time. A few weeks after WrestleMania 38, goofy-ass Yukon Cornelius walks into Roman Reigns' locker room, and the rest is oostery. I mean, history. He was telling Roman that he was the locker room leader, and he had a little proposal for him. He wanted help with Drew McIntyre, and in turn, he'd help the bloodline. And you're thinking to yourself, Sammy? Really? Sammy's gonna be involved with Roman Reigns? Alright, maybe they need a quick little filler feud and that's all this is gonna be. So Sammy just became the biggest bloodline dick rider on the planet. He wanted to defend their honor, he started to hang around with them, and it was the he thinks he's part of the team meme come to life. Sammy was just blinded by the popular kids, just infatuated with being popular himself. So much so that when his real friend told him that he was getting played, he was in full denial. That there was no way he could be getting used. To which Sammy's response was, Elias and Ezekiel are two completely different people. Which they are. Kevin Owens cared about Sammy in this story, but on the opposite end of the spectrum was Jey Uso, who hated this man with a burning passion, like full on wanted this man packed up, shipped out to the middle of nowhere, never to be seen again. At this point, Sammy's involvement in the bloodline was such a random side quest, so strange, such a weird swerve on what had been a straightforward path. He helped the Usos win the Raw Tag Team titles by getting into the production truck, playing Roman's music, and distracting RK Bro. And he was just there to prove his loyalty. And yeah, it wasn't anything too crazy. He was making the best of his TV minutes. Had a funny segment in Roman's locker room where, for some reason, Roman had JUSO2022.png as his caller ID. Nice, good stuff. So you're thinking about this. It's just a Sami Zayn experiment that's about to die off anytime now. But they didn't ditch it. They ran with it, and everything changed in the fall. Cause here, Sammy gave us some of the funniest segments in WWE history. Segments where he was making people break character because again, he mastered the art of just not caring. He brought his little suit back to celebrate Roman Reigns' title reign and he was gonna host this little party or milestone, whatever you wanna call it, and he was completely in his element. Jay took over the ceremony because again, these two are supposed to hate each other. And then after everything Jay would say, Sammy would chime in. Jay says something. Preach! Jay says something. Bet! Jay says something. Yee! Hilarious as always, cause it was the butting heads between Jay and Sammy that made it so funny. You knew this guy doesn't like him and does not want him to be here, so it just worked really well. I should also mention that he started to tag along in the Bloodline's entrances without Roman ever saying he was fully in the Bloodline. So one SmackDown, Roman comes out, cuts his promo, and then he's about to leave. Sammy interrupts, tells him that he just wants to acknowledge him. He's telling him how great he and the Bloodline is, to which Roman asks, Sammy, why are you wearing our shirt? And this was the moment we all thought it was over for Sammy. The look on his face was just so oblivious to what was happening. Jay tore off the shirt and it looked like the end, until Roman handed Sammy a new shirt that read Honorary Oos. After this, we got that one segment, and you guys know exactly which one I'm talking about. So Roman was trying to get to the bottom of the Bloodline's problems and Jay was getting the brunt of the frustration because he'd been annoyed with Sammy for no reason. Sammy said he just wanted peace between him and Jay and that's exactly what Roman wanted. Sammy goes, the tribal chief wants peace and Jay says he doesn't care what the tribal chief says. So Roman is about to go commando on Jay. Sammy steps in and tells him that Jay just hasn't been feeling very oozy. Oozy? The man said Usi. Well, what does that even mean? The crowd starts chanting Usi and Roman, Solo, Jay, Jimmy, and Paul are all in the ring trying to compose themselves because this man, Sami Zayn, was making them break character on live national television. 
everyone in the ring was fighting for their life not to break character because look at him. How are you going to take this guy seriously? Look at the guy. All time legendary segment, peak honorary ooh segment, 10 years, 20 years from now. People are going to have fond memories of this because it was so simple yet so funny. This dude Sami Zayn was doing these stupid grade 4 handshakes with Jimmy Uso and the man was just so unserious to the point where he was making Solo Sokoa crack. The whole story was Jay and him hated each other but Jay was easily breaking character because Sami was just so funny. You are a giant number two. And that is how you are going to end up as a number two. For the longest time this man was just a comedy character and comedic relief. But then he started emoting really well. He had this like puppy dog face to him where he didn't even do anything and you're like, ah, oh, look at Sammy. He's just that one really nice kid who does no harm who's just hanging out with the wrong crowd because that's exactly what it was. Eventually by year's end, Sammy was the highlight of WWE TV. It was always a mystery as to what Sammy is going to do to top the week previous. There are so many goofy little nuances he brought that we could be here forever. His spot on the roster by virtue of being involved in this story was elevated and by year's end his loyalty started to be questioned. He started to get on Roman's nerves because he lost a tag team match for the two, also because Roman felt as though Sammy was in cahoots with Kevin Owens. That gave us yet another legendary segment, another all timer where Sami Zayn was put on trial. This one was called Tribal Court and there were funny pieces of evidence, great work from Roman and Jay in their acting and here it looked like it would be the end for Sami Zayn again. Until in stepped Jay Uso. Sami's true test was at the end of Royal Rumble where it was Roman Reigns versus Kevin Owens. Once that match was over the bloodline laid into Kevin Owens but it was Sami who had a moment of clarity. He was forced to choose between his best friend for years and his adopted family. And he was the one who ended up turning on Roman with the crowd letting out one of the biggest pops in WWE history. The whole ending to the rumble from top to bottom was a magnificent piece of WWE history that will be relived till the end of time. A simple chair shot that had been months in the making. A perfectly executed moment. We all knew that it was going to lead to a match and it did. Perfectly enough in Sami Zayn's hometown. La Belle Provence, Montreal, Quebec, Canada for Elimination Chamber 2023. In the history of WWE, when you look back at some of the craziest crowds, you have One Night Stand, you have Money in the Bank 2011, and now you have the Elimination Chamber. And this crowd booed Roman with a burning passion. Sami got a hero's welcome straight out of a movie. His popularity here was at a fever pitch. White hot baby face. And a lot of people wanted to see WWE pull the trigger. Though he didn't win, it was a special night that wrestling fans and Sammy won't ever forget. But the journey didn't end here. There was still a big night on the horizon. Now it was time for the best friends to reunite. Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn got back together on the road to WrestleMania. And at WrestleMania 39, these two main evented night one, putting on one of the best tag team matches in WWE history. They also ended up being the ones to end the two year rule of the Usos, closing out night one with a blaze of pyro and honestly who would have thought, who would have thought one year beforehand when he was in a comedy match that Sami Zayn could do this in one year. From Wrestlemania to Wrestlemania, Sami had one of the greatest point to point years in WWE history. After Wrestlemania, yeah his popularity did decrease, I mean wrestling judgement day every single Monday for 97 straight Mondays doesn't help but regardless Sammy's insanity from 2020 to 2023 was brilliant. If we see another Daniel Bryan S road to the top who knows because he's proven he can hang with the best of them he can cut passion filled promos and he ticks off all the boxes for the WWE. Yeah sure 2007 Cena was crazy, Perk Angle was a menace but Sami Zayn from 2020 to 2023 was a national treasure. From a complete stooge to in the prime of his career. Who would have thought? The revival of Sami Zayn, simply Usi. See you guys.